Nostalgia Critic guy remember it so you don't have to. There's this idea going around that slapstick is a lesser form of humor. Well, to them I say... <laughs> Ow. Slapstick focuses on the most important rule of comedy, that all comedy, in one way or another, is based on misery. Whether it be mocking something others hold dear, or crushing another in a perfectly timed manner, humor is that defense mechanism that acknowledges that pain is just another part of life. And nowhere DC pain exploited more hilariously than in Tom and Jerry. This cat and mouse duo has had both kids and adults laughing for years through no real dialogue, no real stories, just excuses to crush, burn, and maim each other as much as physically possible. Now, when these shorts came out, cartoons hurting each other wasn't anything new. Lots of cartoon shorts, including Disney and especially Warner Brothers, seemed to have this shtick down pretty well. But if there was already two major companies doing it so well, how come Tom and Jerry rose to be the pinnacle of slapstick duos? Well, maybe one of the main reasons was there was rarely any talking. I mean, there was an occasional line from one or two other characters, but Tom and Jerry themselves usually kept quiet, perhaps allowing less time to devote to motivation and instead more time to devote to the physical humor. Warner Brothers is great, but half their comedy was the words they would say to one another in between the violence, and that worked wonderful for them. But here, they take a few moments to set up the scenario and then it's nothing but hardcore pain the rest of the way giving many audiences exactly what they wanted. On top of that, despite the fact that they couldn't speak, they actually did form very solid personalities. Jerry is playful, innocent, and often looking to just have fun or even just survive. Even if he can have a little too much fun surviving. Tom, being a cat of course, sees him either as a meal or as an interference. Whatever the setup, he's always the one who starts the fight, which makes it very easy to laugh when he gets his comeuppance. But that's not the only reason to feel like he deserves it. He's cocky, he's egotistical, he's prone to anger, he's stubborn. He's all the things that make a great foil, but never to the point where he's unlikable. He still has that goofy playfulness that Jerry has too, which is why in the few instances where they do come together, it's not entirely unbelievable. But let's get down to the reason why people really love Tom and Jerry. They're lost for blood! William Hanna and Joseph Barbera knew how to animate great slapstick. It makes sense in animation seeing how so much of the humor relies on timing, and here you can literally control each frame to the tiniest detail, giving you complete power over your delivery. And that's exactly what they do. They know exactly how fast, how hard, and how painful every device of torture should be. But it's one thing to say they're good at it. Exactly how are they good at it? Why does the slapstick work so much better here than it does in other cartoons? Well, because, again, they understood that anything that can emphasize the amount of pain a character is in, usually the funnier the joke will be. Compare Tom and Jerry to, say, this scene from an episode of Tiny Toons. Now, Tiny Toons most of the time had good slapstick too, but sometimes they got a director or a team of animators that didn't do it as well as Hanna-Barbera did. Of course, the idea of cartoons is to exaggerate the possible, turning it into the impossible. But in order for it to be funny, you have to know what to exaggerate. Like, watch this bit. This scene doesn't work as well because the character is too stretchy and too flexible. It doesn't look like they're getting hurt that bad because it doesn't look solid enough. Now watch when Tom gets hurt. <laughs> works so much better because even though he's being distorted, he still feels solid. And the area that they do manipulate complements the weight of the item that's causing the damage. It's like when you have a jar of Play-Doh. Yeah, it's stretchy and not too hard, but when you smash your fist down on it, it leaves an imprint, so you can tell it's still solid. And the same can be said here. The objects usually leave an imprint on top. Now, if I was to smash my fist down on the Play-Doh and it was to stretch all over the place, that would be too distracting, and thus, we couldn't connect with what we were seeing as well. The animators of Tom and Jerry knew that the more you feel how solid they are, the more you feel the pain. The same could be said for the sounds they make. In the early days, when they were still trying to find their niche, Tom and Jerry, especially Tom, looked much more like real-life animals, and even sounded more like real-life animals. <laughs> Now that's not as funny because it's not as relatable. 
The only thing you think about when you hear that sound is a real-life cat getting hurt. What sick fuck would enjoy that? But when you add a human yell to it... <coughs> suddenly, it's more funny. And yes, every single one of them is done by William Hanna. So, why is this yell funnier than actual cat yell? Well, on top of the surrealness factor, the idea of hearing a man's voice come out of an animal's mouth, as people, we understand a human being being hurt more than we do an animal. Animals don't communicate with us the same way we communicate with each other, so naturally we'll be able to find the humor easier with something that acts more human despite the fact that they look like an animal. That's another reason you almost never see them on all fours. The more they made it look like animals acting like people and not animals acting like animals, the more likely they were to get a laugh. They knew just when to have them use their voices too, they were never overplayed. Like some pieces of cock burger that I know. They were just used at the appropriate time when the scene needed something particularly silly to up the humor. <sighs> I love you. This one especially gets me, just for the surrealness alone. <laughs> Why that deep a voice? Why that major echo? Why even those exact words? I don't know, it's just so strange you have to laugh at it. But again, if they used the voices too much, it would have gotten old, and a scene like that wouldn't be nearly as funny. So they had to use them sparingly. The expressions are also something Hanna-Barbera got down perfectly. The more content and comfortable a character can be in their environment, the more funny it'll be when it comes crackling down. That's why so often you'll see Tom give this mocking grin when he thinks he's won. The more happy he is, the harder the blow will be that knocks him out of his bliss. Even a simple questioning expression can work, as long as the character looks genuinely confused. Adding to the idea that the more the character thinks he's connected to what's really going on, the funnier it'll be when reality comes smashing him in the face. <laughs> The longer they keep it, the more it'll build up how painful the payoff is gonna be. In fact, with that said, half the time, you don't even need to see the expression all the way through. We never see Tom hit the ground in this scene, but the idea that he would keep this face all the way to the bottom just makes the moment all the more hilarious. They practically had it down to mathematical perfection. So if Tom and Jerry were so good at what they did, how come they're not as popular now as they were back then? I mean, granted, they're still big names, but you don't see them around as much as you do Mickey Mouse or Bugs Bunny. I think part of that is that a lot of people just didn't know what to do with them after the animated movie shorts died. Some tried, like legendary animator Chuck Jones gave his spin on the classic duo, but they were a bit too friendly and oftentimes the animation just wasn't on par with the original. But with that said, it's not awful. Take this scene where a magic mouse fairy comes down and gives Jerry a magic potion in order to help him defeat Tom. Any series that has a scene like that has some understanding of what made Tom and Jerry work. But aside from that, we had a lot of adaptations that seemed to aim toward much younger kids than it did both kids and adults. And even today, that still seems to be the lean. Trying to put these two characters that obviously belong in simplistic shorts into dialogue-heavy stories that rarely have anything to do with what made them so popular to begin with. So whether or not an outlet will open up for Tom and Jerry to really shine again is unknown. But what is known is that when Tom and Jerry got it right, they got it right. With a perfect combination of animation, timing, sound effects, and a clear understanding of why physical humor will never die as a comedic art. This is why, though not as popular as they used to be, their names will not be forgotten anytime soon. They didn't break any barriers or change the way animation is done, they just did what they did so well, and that was simply being funny. And as long as we keep orphan girls with Indiana Jones fathers and ice cream cart rapists out of the picture, I can assure you that Tom and Jerry will still be relevant names for years to come. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it so you don't have to.
Hi, Doug Walker here, and holy shit. I mean, holy shit. I'm, of course, talking about the Indiegogo uh, thing that we did to raise 50000 to get uh, our, our, our shows going, our other shows, the, this uh, pop culture and nostalgia show, this game show, the sound like games we wanted to go, and even with still several days left, we hit our goal. I mean, like, we hit 50000 We were actually at fifty five uh, as I'm making this video. And holy shit... I, Everyone always says, like, oh, yeah, 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 you'll make it, come on, you're a big name, stuff like that, but you really don't know. There's a lot of things that people assure you are gonna happen, and they don't, so for something like this to really come through, for you guys to come through, we're gonna do our damnest to come through ourselves, because this is really, really awesome, and we really couldn't be more thankful to you guys, so bottom of our hearts, thank you so much. We're into stretch goals now. We're into that territory, and I'm just sort of here real fast to tell you what the stretch goals are as well as uh, what the money that we have now is going to. It's pretty much the stuff we said before. We're going to use it to uh, get the set put together for the... Uh, uh, for the Nostalgia Pop Culture Show, uh, you know, to, to get the contestants going and prizes going, and uh, we're updating all our equipment. Uh, we're updating new cameras. Uh, the cameras we worked with have been nice, but we won't go on to, like, the SDI stuff, which is going to look a lot more professional. It's going to be easy to work with at Editing Live. Uh, new editing equipment, that's coming. Uh, you know, new lighting. All this stuff is coming to make these productions and these shows look even better than they are now. So... All that is coming. Uh, the stretch goals, uh, if we hit uh, 65, uh, pretty much we're going to be going into the uh, the comic book show next. We want to do a comic show that's not just a review show, but it's sort of everything comics. We want to do sort of like this comic variety show that just sort of welcomes and celebrates and rips apart and does everything comics pretty much because this culture is just so grand right now with the movies going and just comics are just huge so we really want to do something that really has fun with that and celebrates that and talks about it just all sorts of fun stuff and if we hit uh, 75k, we're going to go right into the video game show. Uh, we're going to go into having those episodes ready and set to go. Uh, we're going to try and do new stuff with that that you don't usually see. Video game game show. I'm sorry, you know what I mean. But, uh, yeah, because you... It, it, people should be rewarded for their lazy asses sitting down and playing those video games. Like me when I play. So, um, yeah, pretty much... This whole thing is just blowing my mind, man. It is so cool. We've gone from, I mean, at least me personally, not knowing if we reached that goal to going to stretch goals. And that's, that's you guys that made that possible. So it's, it's the coolest thing. It's so awesome that you guys care that much. The people that donated a certain amount and have the perks coming, they'll definitely be coming. And, uh, man, just, I don't even have the words. I know it's cliche, but I really don't have the words. It is so awesome, guys. A uh, lot of cool stuff is coming, and now it'll get to you even faster. We're excited. I hope you're excited. We're going to do our best to come through and get good stuff for you guys. So, I'll see you later. As of now, I'm going to watch some Korra. <laughs>